You're watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2018 in Los Angeles. And I'm joined now by Jean Savi of Orange. Jean, very nice to see you again on Telecom TV. Why does open networking and open source matter? Why are they so important to the telco community? So I think one uh, important point is to come back to the ecosystem maturity right now. Uh, because uh, as far as we talk about the SDN and MP, we cannot obviously consider that the ecosystem is mature and stabilized. And so for us, open source is a very good way to uh, kind of standardize uh, and to come to a final uh, reference to a, a mature design architecture, generally speaking. Um, and so it's also a good way to make it happen in a common way and to kind of achieve a telco alliance uh, to make it happen, to make it happen at scale and in a sustainable manner. Because uh, of course, if we make it, make it happen, but it's not sustainable, especially from the economic standpoint, then uh, it's a kind of failure. And so for us, open source is this vehicle, it's very key. Uh, and so it's not only adopting open source, it's also being involved in the open source community, being a contributor, a huge contributor, to influence it, of course, the, the good way. And we have a big concern, a big credo to date, uh, that is about the value chain, and that's why we uh, bet one more time on the open source to kind of standardize or hom homogenize among telcos, uh, the infrastructure, for example. Which One of the major open source projects that has garnered a lot of interest over the past 12 months is ONAP. What is ONAP and how is Orange involved? Yeah, so we believe a lot in ONAP and we've been involved or even we've been the co-founder of ONAP uh, at the very beginning of it, uh, of course, under the, the impulsion of uh, AT&T. And so uh, for us, ONAP is a critical component uh, of the architecture because it's the promise for automation. And uh, the, the key promise and the key benefit for SDN and FV at the end of the journey and from the customer standpoint as well as from the operations standpoint is this agility. It's continuous deployment, for example, it's uh, very fast TTMs, time to market and, and things like that. And so to achieve that, we need a very smart uh, automation, a very smart orchestration and that's the positioning of ONAP, the main positioning of ONAP and that's why we also count on ONAP uh, very strongly. And the second reason is once again about this question of standardization. We need, uh, uh, telcos need to have uh, uh, cloud ready uh, VNFs that are able to be integrated uh, quasi plug and play and to get to this point we need to have certified VNFs and ONAP will play this role to uh, uh, yes um, pre-certify these VNFs and guarantee they are well automated they are uh, able to be onboarded very easily and so on so uh, that's why, that's the second reason why we bet on ONAP so much. And when might we see Orange deploy ONAP commercially? And so it's not only once again to be able to deploy it, and we intend to deploy it uh, next year probably in a few countries. We are uh, running tests right now, but we intend to deploy it in countries next year. It's not only adopting, it's also contributing to be able to uh, 
automate the use cases that have the more value, the, the more priority from our standpoint. Can we move on to talk about standards and open source? Because for so long it's been standards that's been prevalent and open source has been a, a fast means to deploy this standardized technology. However, are we now at a stage where it could well be open source that actually drives new standards? We consider that it's open source that will kind of drive standards. I mean, there will be standards de facto themselves, in fact. And that's why also, for example, we are counting on the OP and FD community, because we need to standardize the infrastructure, the NFVI at worldwide level. And why do we need that? To have this capacity from the VNF vendors to certify or to pre-certify their VNFs to, so they can guarantee that they will be easily onboarding, they will be uh, easily automated, and that uh, the key question of the interest integration on the infrastructure will be natively uh, guaranteed. And so this is a question of a prerequisite for this SDN and FE promise of agility. If not, we will miss it, which is obviously a pity. And it's a question of value chain sustainability once again, because if uh, the VNF funders has to certify its VNF against as many infrastructure as we have telcos, it's simply uh, not, uh, not credible uh, on the long run. So that's why uh, we bet on the open source, and once again I can quote OPNFB specifically, to set up standards de facto in a fast uh, way, uh, because we are right now at the good timing in terms of industrialization. Many telcos are deploying at scale, and so it's the good uh, timing uh, to make it uh, happen. A final question, perhaps looking a bit further into the future, and that's about containers. The open source world loves containers, but what exactly are they, and why are they relevant, or why might they be relevant, to telcos? So um, we in Orange consider that it's the next step uh, for virtualization, more or less. It's a lower granularity to reach disaggregation, and so it's an ability to mutualize uh, the operating system, basically. Uh, and so, at the end of the day, it's a more efficient infrastructure, both from the economical standpoint, it's probably uh, less expensive, and from the agility standpoint, it's also easier uh, to, to manage and to operate. So, uh, we believe in the containers, yes. And by the way, we already deploy containers with Kubernetes uh, um, for the IT. Uh, so we have it in production for the IT. We also believe in that for the network, but probably uh, next step, let's say, we are the VM step where we deploy, we make it at scale, but based on the virtual machines and uh, we are on the way to, to containers for the network also. Jan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.